Good day and welcome back. Today I want to take you through some basic work formula. So the reason I want to take you through this is because when I went through this, I looked at these simple formulas and said, hey, they'll be given. I don't need to memorize them, flip through them, I recognize them, we're done. But in reality, I didn't know how to use these formulas. So uh, there's four of them, and I just want to take you through the situations, the assumptions, and when you would use them in the exam. Because of course they will be given, but you won't know when to use them. So the first example we have is work at a constant pressure. Which equals P delta V. Now I want you to realize that this will be called, when you're asked to use this one in a, in, in a problem, it will be called sometimes isobaric, which just means constant pressure. The other situation I want you to realize here is if the volume does not change, there's actually an example in your Pan Global books that takes you through a situation where the, it's a constant volume situation. That assumption helps you get some really good calculations work your way through the problem and then they ask you secretly or, or sneakily what is the volume or sorry what is the work done in this situation and one must realize that when you do work equals p delta v and this v is zero well of course the work done is zero okay there's two situations where you'll be asked to use this equation. And now you know the little tricks. The second calculation for work we will look at is constant temperature. Now we basically integrate to get this which I won't go through because it's not anything that you guys will be asked. P2 over P1. But I want you guys to go through one thing. Grab two random pre pressures. Grab a 100 kPa and a, let's say 50 kPa. And I want to make sure that you guys know how to use that LN function on your calculator. That's something that will come up. So when do we use this isothermal situation? Well, sorry, constant temperature is called isothermal. So there will be little things on the exam where they'll expect you to know this terminology. No big deal, isothermal, constant temperature, easy to remember. So when would we use this? This is a theoretical only. Theoretical, I wish I could spell. So let's look at a compressor. Um, we would have to have some pretty exact coolers on it because as we compress the gas and the natural gas in that compressor station or air in a compressor um, for a tire shop, we're going to heat up that fluid. So we can put some coolers on there to decrease the temperature of that fluid, but we'll never be perfect. We'll never keep that working fluid all at the same temperature. It's going to go through a temperature change. It's too much energy to cool it. So why would we ever do this? So. It's more of a theoretical situation to calculate. So the good thing is you'll never be asked to kind of assume this because it'll be given to you. They will tell you, hey, this is a constant temperature situation. Okay, let's look at the next one. Adiabatic. I'm sure you've heard the terminology before. Adiabatic. No, there's a couple things that I always used to screw up when it comes to adiabatic. Adiabatic does not mean constant temperature. It means the temperature that working fluid may change. And this symbol is basically CP over C, oops, CV. So the temperature of this working fluid may change. We're just assuming that we're perfectly insulated when we say adiabatic. We're perfectly insulated compressor cylinders or perfectly insulated turbine, and we're not going to lose temperature to the surroundings, nor are the surroundings going to give us any heat. So basically, 
it's it's a more realistic assumption um it's not entirely true we know nothing's perfectly insulated however these fluids are ripping through these machineries at a pretty fast pretty fast speed so it is somewhat realistic for a quick and dirty calculation oops we don't need this part okay oh, shoot i just So remember these two tidbits for here. So P1, V1, Two V two to the Y power. So you'll often be um, this will be a nice situation. So two things to remember when you're given adiabatic. Right away, we know that we're not losing any heat to the surroundings or gaining any heat. Okay. So that's the way we calculate work. This we know pretty easy to deal with. But we'll also be no. You also need to know this equation. Sometimes you won't be asked to calculate work and you'll maybe be asked to calculate a second uh, the the second state's volume or the second state's pressure so again adiabatic the temperature of that fluid can change and well change however we're not going to lose any heat to the surroundings or gain any heat from the surroundings okay let's look at our most realistic situation polytropic So what I would often do is I never understood what was the difference between, you know what guys, I screwed up this for you. Okay. I never understood what the difference was between these two formulas. What was the difference between that wonky N and the wonky Y? Well, the difference is, is that your N is will be given. It's experimentally determined. Now, why is it experimental? Well, this is the most realistic. In this situation, we realize that pressure is going to change. We realize that volume is going to change. We realize also, unlike adiabatic, that we're going to lose heat to the surroundings or heat's going to be applied to our working fluid. In, in most realistic situations, like a compressor or a turbine, you're going to lose heat to the surroundings. So we'll be given some wonky number like 1.7543 that you can actually determine in an experiment. And again, just like adiabatic, ooh, ooh, hold on, hold on. Wow, I'm botching this for you guys. There you go. To the n power equals p2 v2 to the n power. So again, that's a very useful formula to know. Of course, you'll be given the n. So let's go over the differences of these to summarize. Constant pressure. And we realize that in some situations where there is no change in volume, we will have no work done. Constant pressure is also called isobaric. We can also have a situation called constant temperature where we want to calculate that work. It's a theoretical situation. We try to achieve it with coolers between stages of some of the work processes that we work with. But in reality, it's very theoretical and it will never happen. So we call that an isothermal situation. We have an adiabatic situation, and when are we going to see that? 
Well, and the important thing is to remember that the temperature of the fluid may change. So from state one to state two, we will probably see a different temperature. However, we are making an assumption that we're not losing any heat to the surroundings or acquiring any heat from the surroundings. So that's fairly realistic. And then we have a truly realistic situation where we experimentally find the N for this equation. Um, those are, they, they're regularly used throughout engine dynamics and testing engines. It's an accurate situation. So yeah, there you go. I hope that that clears you up and I hope you won't bomb these questions like I did because I didn't know how to use these formulas. Take care. Have a good day. We'll speak to you again.